think a lot of people still have ideas of Quakers as being the traditional Quaker dress and a little bit odd, a bit strange. I think people see Quakers as quite exclusive and I think they may see them as quite old-fashioned. My generation, the younger people often have a very strange image of a Quaker if they know what any a Quaker is at all, but a lot of them have heard of Quaker oats, so um, they do assume that we all eat Quaker oats perhaps constantly. Just I mean, a couple of weeks ago I mentioned to someone about going to Quaker meetings and, oh, you know, they're a very strange lot, aren't they? Good morning. Good morning. I first came to the Quakers uh, really uh, because of my son Daniel. He uh, first went to Quakers with a, a good f family friends of ours and then he wanted to continue uh, coming to the meetings, so that drew me in. First, it was about 12 years ago, um, and my wife and I had been involved with some Buddhist groups before. We were both at a phase where we weren't happy with what we had been involved with, and we were looking for a you know, spiritual group to be involved with. Um, and hadn't really explored much on the Christian side of things. Neither of us really, neither of us have really come from a Christian background. Jane, my partner, went along to a meeting and uh, found out what a friendly place it was. And then we all went along because there was some provision for children there. And we went on from there. It, it was, we were just very much welcomed and it was a lovely atmosphere. Having been just had a sort of been brought up in the local Anglican church and gone to church parade as a guide in a brownie and then not really had any involvement in a religious group in my 20s until I met Simon. So um, he took me to meeting and I just felt very at home at meeting and really have been going ever since then. People often wonder what happens, you know, when you go in, what do you what do? You do? do you sort of, because there are sort of things that you do in other churches, you kneel and pray or you, um, but no, you just sit and, and, and wait and there's a, idea that the meeting during the first sort of few minutes or so becomes gathered as people centre down. Well the idea really is that once you go into the room um, that's the beginning of, of being there for worship. Uh, so preferably people shouldn't talk to each other. Well meetings for worship are held in silence. It's an hour of silence and during that hour the children stay for the, the first 15 minutes and they sit also in silence. They might read books or just snooze, perhaps for a little while. Yeah, there are, if you want to read books, you can read books, and mostly the books are about stories from the Bible. Usually we read a book. But I, th I think one of the reasons that, they, that, that it actually is possible for kids to sit in silence is because um, the power of the silence is, is tangible to them. That Children are much more in touch spiritually often than, than adults, and they know that it's... They just know that it's important, that something is actually going on. It's kind of, in a community, the silence, uh, it's not really separate. You don't really feel separate. And if someone wants to speak, then they can stand up and speak their thoughts. After a quarter of an hour, the children go out of meeting and go into their own room. There are various ways you can centre down. Some people will look around the room and, and um, think of each person and imagine them in light. Your mind can just drift in and out of things and you can just, you know, say sort of prayers or, or thank yous and think about somebody. Even just thinking about one or two people who are having a hard time in life. Bring the whole of your life under the ordering of the Spirit of Christ. Are you, Are you open, open to the to healing, healing power of God's love? Cherish that of God within you, so that this love may grow in you and guide you. Let, Let your, your worship, worship and your daily life enrich each other. Treasure your experience of God however it comes to you. Remember that Christianity Remember is not a notion. That Christianity but is not a notion, but a way. We gather together to worship God and a, a oneness appears. We settle into the quietness, there's a, a listening going on and as the meeting progresses that 
depth of peace really increases. Uh, the quietness is a source of strength. The meeting is something which is a separation from the world itself. I can only describe it as, as a deep going uh, inwards, quiet, still place, but also a place of, uh, at times, of great energy as well. I think it varies, to be honest, because sometimes all I'm doing is trying not to think of other things, like all the things I've got to do, and sometimes I just need to spend half the time trying to clear my head, which is why I'll often sort of read something. Sometimes I'm just sort of noticing things around me that I wouldn't normally notice, like in the meeting room at Watford, um, the light's really nice. Sometimes the light comes in through the top windows. So it's not kind of a... You're not separated off from where you are. It's not like you're kind of retreating somewhere into space. I think that's quite key with Quaker worship, actually, that it's not, a, not, it's not really about meditation and retreating in that way, but it's finding that place of stillness, really. I really look forward to going to meeting for worship, being with other people in that what I would describe as an energetically charged um, space where one can cast out into that which is beyond oneself. For me, I'm just surrendering to God in whatever sense you use the word God, the universal intelligence or whatever. To me, it's God and the Holy Spirit and those words are quite adequate for me. I often just sit in silence and just try and relax and then things might come to me that have been playing on my mind, perhaps subconsciously. And um, I find it a very valuable time to contemplate that um, in silence, which is a pretty rare thing nowadays, particularly when I'm with my friends and so on, we're very rarely silent. So everybody in Quaker meeting may be doing different things. And then if a person stands to, to give ministry, uh, we focus on what they're saying. Some people will say they, they get up knowingly. A lot of people will say they get up to speak before they know that they're there, that they've done it. Amazing experience, actually, when it happens, because you know, the whole thing about quaking, and it does, you know, that's how I experience it, like that. It's by no means an intellectual, ooh, I think I'll say this, you know. It is unmistakable, and I'm urged up on my feet. You literally are pushed out of your seat. It's only happened to me a few times. It's pretty scary. Um, but you, your heart starts beating and, and, and you, you, you sort of think, no, 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 I don't want to do this, I don't like this, and da-da-da-da-da. But in the end, you find yourself standing and afterwards you don't always remember quite what you said. It's like you, you know you can't say no to it. You know, you've, you've got to get up and, and, and say it. And it's, a, it's quite a strange experience in many ways. It's an utterance in, into that, into the silence of the meeting, so that, that whatever thought has come up um, can be held, really, held within, within the group um, and disseminated, if it's a problem, in, in some shape or form.